This is my bike. Weight, just over seven kilograms, depending on how much food I decide to strap to it. When I'm racing super bikes, my bike usually has 165 kilograms. Top speed, about 115 kilometers an hour. I did that in Switzerland, a race, pretty terrifying. Actually, top speed of around 330 kilometers per hour. Max power, 1300 watts for all of about two seconds on a good day. 230 brake horsepower, that's uh, around 170,000 watts. Both two-wheeled but totally different breeds of bike. And today I'm interested to know what the real differences are when you race on two wheels at the very ends of the bike spectrum. So I've enlisted the help of world superbike rider Eugene Laverty to help. I'm taking him for a ride. Should we go for a ride then, Connor? Yeah, let's do it, mate. Oh. No, no engines allowed today. Go on, mate, let's get your push bike. Eugene Laverty, professional motorcycle road racer from Northern Ireland, knows a thing or two about riding the engine-powered cousin of our humble push bike. He has notched up 13 victories in World Superbike and also achieved a career best finish of second place back in the 2013 World Superbike Championship. Plus has also completed two seasons in MotoGP. But Eugene also likes to ride bikes of the pedal-powered variety, which is why today, I'm taking him out for a spin and have a few challenges in store for good measure. Not a can of petrol in sight. So we're out on the pedal bikes now, Eugene. How did you get into cycling? It was around 2004, I first got into it. That was at the time when cyclists, cycling was really breaking through into the mainstream. And got my first push bike, started riding around the roads and fell in love with it. And do you use it to keep fit for your motorbike racing or is it just, just a passion? Yeah, it's mainly to keep fit for my job. That's what we have to always remember because there's a lot of motorbike riders that become obsessed with cycling and end up training to be a cyclist. But we have to remember that we do this just for fitness for a motorbike because we're competitive guys. Once you start to improve on a pushbike, you want to get better and better. But sometimes you just have to say, stop. Yeah. And what does it feel like when you're kind of racing around the track at like 300k an hour plus? and you're in that mindset, and then you come back out on the roads and cruising, rock, cruising along with me at 20k an hour. Well, that's the strange thing. A lot of people think motorbike racers are adrenaline junkies, that we would chase that in other sports, but most guys that race motorbikes, we like cycling, like to play golf, like relax things, because we get our adrenaline fix from our job. So what we want to do away from the track is just go ride a push bike, have a good coffee, and uh, enjoy life. We've got a few challenges though today. Yeah. I was thinking we have a head-to-head -head sprint to kick things off. Right, see who's got the, the max power in the legs. Right then, Eugene, time for a sprint off. All right. Are you ready? Going on the drops. On the drops it is. <laughs> you tell so me when. Let's pick a finish line. What about the White House just up here? Okay, here okay, we go. Right, yeah. Three, two, one, go on. Oh, oh got me. Oh. Oh. Nailed. You nailed me, Eugene. <laughs> I need to upgrade my brake horsepower. <laughs> I had right. to sit back down again and shift gears. Yeah. <laughs> Could you're fast off the line. <laughs> Eugene, I've picked the steepest climb to ask you this next question. How do you keep on top of your fitness when you're racing on motorbikes? For me, the cardio side, the push bike and running are important. Especially running, whenever you're traveling, you can do it pretty easily. I've got my motorbikes in my garage to do the riding skills and keep it sharp. But for me, I enjoy riding the bike as well. For your mind, it's good. And what's the kind of muscles that are going to give out first? Like for me, when I'm racing a bike, legs, maybe lower back, that goes first, but when you're wh whipping around a racetrack, what's, what's the story there? For motorbike riders, it's 
uh, arm pump as we call it, it's compartment syndrome in your arms. We have to use our arms so much, so a lot of riders have the surgery to slice open the sheath. My two brothers have had it. Fortunately, I didn't need it. I've uh, managed to keep my arms pretty small, so that's the key. You need your power from your, your chest and your back, okay. so the arms don't have to work as much. And that's just from the force of kind of holding onto the bars and... Yeah, there's so much horsepower and acceleration, G-forces, also in braking, we've got to keep our body weight against the handlebars. You, you go from pushing to pulling constantly during the entire race. Yeah, that's very different to a push bike, I guess, because I think for me on a really long descent, what's going to start to hurt is maybe your wrists and your hands, but with disc brakes, that's kind of made that a lot easier. Back in the day when I was racing on rim brakes, yeah. seems like I'm speaking about the 60s, but it was only a few years ago. If you race it in the rain especially, your hands will be so sore after a long descent in the rain. Well, in terms of the challenges so far, you're actually leading the, uh, the points tally. Ooh. So, <laughs> I've devised another one, which I'm hoping I might win, but to be honest, I don't think it's going to go in my favour. Right, next up in our little head-to-head -head battles, cornering. Who can get the greatest lean angle round this cheeky little hairpin here in the Portuguese hills? The agile cyclist or the skilled motorbike professional? I think I've got my work cut out on this one. So that was the cornering challenge. The boffins at GCN are currently analysing that footage, determining the winner, the right lean angle. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be a post result sort of conclusion. If you, if you got that, we'll send you a bottle in the post, Eugene. I don't think I've won that one. I think you've clinched it. Oh, I don't know, I'll see, we'll see. I'm not too confident. <laughs> But on the topic of cornering, what does it feel like to corner on a road bike compared to a motorbike? It's completely different actually. The, the style on a road bicycle is to lean the bike over and keep your body on top of it. Whereas what we do, we try and keep the motorbike upright and lean our body off instead. And is it any different when you go off-road as well? Uh, off-road is more like this same as on a mountain bike. You see the guys downhill, they lean the bike so much into a berm. Off-road's the same, so I've tried it. On a bicycle, I thought, hmm, I wonder if I keep the bike upright and I get my body outside, does it work? But it doesn't, you just need to lean the thing over because the tires are so narrow. Yeah, and do you think your experience racing motorbikes has kind of given you the skills to descend on a road bike or does it just feel like totally different? No, it's probably made me more wary, <laughs> I think, yeah. because I know that it hurts when you hit the tire back, so I just think, no, I'm not going to push it because these tires, they could give away without any warning. Our tires have got so much grip and feeling that if it does move, you can feel the limit, whereas these tires, you'd be gone. Well, the rain's starting to fall now, so I think we should get the rain jackets on and crack on with our ride because we've still got a few, few uh, metres to climb. Yeah, we're not even halfway up the mountain, so yeah. rain jackets on and go. Yeah, might have a coffee stop. That's something you get to do on road bikes. Oh, you, yeah. you don't get a coffee stop on the racetrack, do you? No, no, that's the highlight. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Next unexpected question, Eugene. What happens when it rains on the motorbike track? Fire up the coffee machine. Stay yeah. indoors. Get in the garage. <laughs> yeah. And we've got different tyres for the wet, whereas you boys, you keep the same tyres off. Yeah. We've got a eucalyptus tree to hide under there. Yeah. That's yeah, not doing much for us. Two Irishmen hiding under a eucalyptus tree. <laughs> we've escaped the shelter of the handy eucalyptus tree. I'm back in sunshine. But now we're on the lower slopes, our kind of main climb of the day. So is this a sort of mountain road you do often out on the, out on the bike? Nope. I always say it. <laughs> my motorbike has got a throttle to get over hills, so I don't uh, cycle over them. I, I yeah. tend to go around mountains whenever I can. Everybody thinks from my build, because I'm a slight guy, that I'll be a mountain goat, but nah, I'm more of an endurance guy. And that well, seems like from today, a bit of a sprinter as a well. sprinter too, I think, yeah. Anyway, this climb is about 7.7 .7 kilometers long. Climbs to around 900 meters elevation. I think we should have a bit of a race at the top. So I reckon when we get to about 3K to go, final head to head. See who's brought the climbing legs. I can't exactly say I'm excited, but <laughs> let's give it a go. Okay, let's do it.
Right then, you, Jim, we're only a few kilometers from the top, so I think this is our cue for a battle royale. Well, we've got some headwind as well. First one to the top takes it. All right. Both the bike versus cyclist. All right, here we go. Shall we? Yeah. Three, two, one. Right, we're up. All out for the gun. Can't shake him. Legs are starting to tighten already. Yeah, we're using on the ropes. I've seen his sprint from earlier in the day as well. I don't trust those strong forearms. I've abandoned Eugene into a brutal headwind. Right then, time to put the hammer down. I'm going for it. Turn the pedals, keep the cane as high. A rare display of form by me there. I think a bit of a panic training paid off slightly, but good effort, Eugene. I tried. You're going well up there. Highest point in the Algarve too, I made it to the top. Yeah. Oh, time to catch our breath. But I'm interested to know how you actually train for motorbike racing, because when I was racing, obviously I'd be, you know, 20 to 30 hours a week, every single day pushing on the pedals. And you were telling me that you're, you're actually not allowed to take the motorbike out a certain amount of days a year. So he's kind of getting out on the bicycle, a way of, you know, being able to get out on two wheels whenever you want. In a way it is. I think for me, every sport I love has got two wheels, uh, be it with an engine or without. Uh, I ride my motorbikes off-road, a little bit of supermoto on, on kart tracks, but in terms of being on an all-out racing course, we're only allowed maybe a dozen days of year testing, wow. and then the 13 race weekends. But the sport is strange because we can be four or five months off, and we can get back on the bike, and within three laps we can be near the lap record. So it's quite bizarre to think that we can be that long off and our brain gets quickly up to speed again. Yeah, it's crazy, because when you're racing bikes, it just takes like two to three months, really, until you even get close to good form. Um, we do have uh, one last descent to do though, yeah. so I think we make the most of it. Yeah, I'll get my jacket on and uh, let's get back down. That's fine. That's fine. There we go, made it down most of the descent anyway. Um, Eugene, it's been an absolute honour to arrive with you. Thanks so much for joining us. and. Uh, all the best next year. Hope you smash it. Thanks, Connor. No, it's been an awesome day. Look forward to riding again sometime. Yeah, been great to have a pedal together. Yeah, so definitely. Take it easy on the way home and uh, take it steady, mate. I appreciate it. Cheers. Nice one. There you go. It's been so cool to share the road with Eugene today. We've both dedicated our lives to riding and racing two wheels, just in very different respects. And I think I would definitely find it very, very scary to jump on a motorbike at race because, well, what Eugene and the rest of those guys do is just incredible. I don't know how they manage it. Let us know in the comment section below, though, what you find scarier, push bike or motorbike. I think the majority of us are going to be motorbike there. As always, thanks for watching, though. Hope you've enjoyed this video and see you on the next one.